Brazil. This is Isaac, Taylor, and Zach, and, and we're Hanson. Hanson. You're listening to 89 FM, a radio rock. Fala, galera, beleza? Eu sou o Endo Correia e hoje eu vou conversar com o Taylor, o Isaac e o Zac, os irmãos do Hanson, para falar sobre o novo álbum deles chamado Red, Green and Blue e sobre a turnê que eles vão fazer pelo Brasil. Vão passar por várias cidades. Aqui em São Paulo eles tocam no dia 15 de outubro no Espaço Unimed. Tudo isso e muito mais com exclusividade para 89 Rádio Rock. How are you guys? Yeah. We're very good. How has been the tour so far? It's been amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. of course, the whole whole world has been delayed in, in a lot for a lot of tours, and so we feel like we're making up for lost time. <laughs> yeah. Um, to, we've been all over Europe, and you know, up in Scandinavia and Germany and Italy, and we're finally getting our rhythm now. So yeah, it's been exciting to see fans, uh, you know, city after city. Uh, I will say. Um, I don't know whether it's that we haven't been on tour in a long time or whether it's just that everybody feels extra excited, but it does feel like everybody is really engaged and excited in a way that I haven't felt in a long time. Hey, what did you guys miss most about touring? <laughs> Everything. Uh, I think, I think yeah. for me, it's for me, it's meeting people night after night. For me, it's talking, you know, with fans after the show, before the show. Um, And the and and I don't know what other word to use yeah. except the joy of being together and sharing, you know, sharing the songs. There's you know? a there's a real kind of brotherhood on tour where you're you're sharing small spaces with a lot of people, the guys who play on stage with us, the crew who makes everything happen, and and you miss being with those people too, right? They become your close friends. They become people you rely on year after year, week after week. People um, that you have stories with. Yeah, yeah. You have a lot of <laughs> war stories with. Yeah. Um, you know, we had a crazy experience getting into Switzerland and everybody had to pile off the bus and carry all the gear onto trains and you know, you share these stories and um, when you don't get to do that together, yeah. you begin to miss that. It's not just the fans, it's the people who make all the shows happen. What do you remember when you when you talk about Brazil and any funny story you can share with us? I mean, gosh, I mean, there's so many there's so many things for me. I mean, it's always like, good food, good times, you know, <laughs> great shows. I remember right. being, being Isaac doesn't remember most tours because of cachaça. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> all I remember is too many caipirinhas and too much good food. <laughs> yeah, there's. We were asked to perform to dance samba live on television. Oh, I remember once many and, times. Uh, the first time it happened. First time. <laughs> I remember thinking, wow, okay, I need to be ready for anything. When we're in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, beautiful country, beautiful people, um, and some of the most loyal fans we've ever had. Uh, yeah. we, we're very appreciative of the Brazilian fans. You know, we see we see fans that travel from Brazil to, to concerts in other parts of the world, yeah. and so now it's our turn to travel. I also will say Brazilians are probably the most proud of their country maybe even more than Americans. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, they're very proud of these Everybody so everybody who is... love their culture. Yeah. It's, it's like yeah, it's we're Brazilian. You know? Kind of intoxicating. Yeah. It's very cool. We're very known here in Brazil. I talked to my mother, I'm going to interview her. So yes, I know they remember then. And uh, younger people, 15 years old, I'm I'm going to interview her. So I know then. So you, you are very known until now very, very known here in Brazil. It yeah, still happens. Yeah. Good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and Zach, yeah, that's, that's... your birthday October 22, right? Yes, yes. Last show in Brazil is going to be on Rio October 21. Are you going to celebrate here? Yeah, I, we will. We will have to. It will be, yeah. uh, you know, uh, it's a big milestone and it's something special that, um, you know, I've been on tour almost every birthday of my life. We started the band when I was six, and we've toured so many birthdays. And so it's it's very special to be on stage right at that time and kind of share that with the audience. And the, the amount of love you get is kind of <laughs> it makes you think you're a king or something. You know, you're like, yes, yes, it's my day. <laughs> yeah, you have thousands of people singing happy birthday yeah. and things like this. It's yeah. very, very, very cool. And you guys are really on a world tour. It's really a world tour until January you are going to be on tour. How you guys take care of your voice and health to be able to make these dates? Well, well, we one we have years of training. I mean, we it is you know honestly staying rested is the hardest thing, and so you have to take care of yourself. You have to try and not eat everything and drink everything. <laughs> yeah. um, but we had we recently lost our our voice teacher that passed away. He'd been our teacher for 20 plus years. He, he thankfully 
uh, the foundation of, of really learning to sing and look properly to is really I mean, vocal, vocal technique. technique because you know yeah. it's like it's 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 true of of uh, of Olympic athletes. Not that we're Olympic level athletes, or anything, <laughs> but it's it's true of every person who does a, does a profession like this. You uh, technique starts to really matter when you put yourself under a lot of pressure. And he really taught us the foundations of what uh, things like classical singing and opera, what you learn in order to project and where you put air so that you don't put too much pressure on your vocal cords. So you can survive. And lose, yeah, because yeah. otherwise you'll lose your voice. You well, really will. One really good thing too about our band, which I think is unique to some, and, and this new Red, Green, Blue album sort of illustrates it, is if you are having an off night, you can be like, hey Isaac, why don't you sing a couple? You know? A couple extra <laughs> songs tonight. I'm having a rough one. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And you guys are 30 years on the road. How has been dealing with professional business, family business, and any advice for Gallagher's brothers? <laughs> I, I, we don't take advice from the Gallagher's. I, I and they don't need advice from us, I don't yeah, think, I either. Mean, the truth is that, you know, they, they've done very, very well for themselves. They clearly yes, have, they have different dynamic. I mean, we, you know, it's not about agreeing all the time. I mean, we don't agree on lots of stuff, and we, we are very different. But, you know, the one thing we have had is a common you know, respect and, and belief in the thing we're, we're, we're doing together and the music. And, and so I think kind of honoring that is, is always something that helps bring it together. You always try and how do you, how do you work towards something? Because I mean, especially brothers family, you're very close, you know each other very well. We have been doing this for a lifetime. Sometimes too well. Yeah. And, and yeah, most time. <laughs> and, but we we have such a you know a regard for what we've been given and I, I mean the two words that when we were starting this tour for me was just thinking about gratitude and thinking about how to celebrate you know like that's what we get to do every night is to have gratitude for the audience and also to celebrate with yeah. them and so you know you try and remember those things when you just want to like sock each other uh, because, because, because you've got all these all these people that have you know, kind of shared their lives with you in a way. They they've waited in lines and they've traveled to you know to see you and uh, you know you you have to remember. Okay, you know this isn't just about me right now. Like, how can we go out and do something that that's going to make a positive impact on somebody else? That's great. And if you guys released two new albums during lockdown against the world last year and this year, Red, Green, and Blue. Did you write a lot of songs during lockdown? We did. In fact, actually, I did the exact count. We actually released. <clears throat> Between we do music for our fan club every year, <clears throat> as well as releasing these two records, it's thirty nine songs. Thirty nine songs in two years. Thirty nine songs in two years. That's yeah. a lot of music. <laughs> Frankly, actually, an overwhelming amount. I wouldn't recommend doing that. <laughs> it's actually too much because you actually because you love these songs and <laughs> there's too much there's too much music. You can't even play that many songs in one show. Yeah, that's, you know? that's two sets song in and of itself. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of music created, uh, which was a, a side benefit of just being being uh, home a lot, having access to the studio a lot. And, um, you know, we're, we're a tight-knit unit, so uh, we, we didn't really uh, isolate from each other or, you know, <laughs> lock down from each other. Uh, though we weren't allowed to play shows, we did a ton of streaming and tried to sort of reach out to fans all over the world because you know, when people are stuck in their homes and told they can't be with the people they love, that's that's a terrible sentence. You know, you don't you don't want that. And and so, in what little way we can, you know, being that kind of voice that that people have they've known you in a way for decades, right? And so, when you get to come in through a streaming show or a TV show and kind of be in their living room, it's a connection to the the life that they'd like to be living, and and a reminder that. You know, this is this is uh, just for a moment, you know, and we've got to get through it. And talking about the specific about Red, Green, Blue, how was the process of writing and recording? Did you decide before uh, recording the songs that each one of you were going to have five songs on the album? How was the process of it? Well, I mean, there was definitely a discussion. It, it, it evolved. I mean, I think it started with an idea that I'd kind of had where I was kind of saying, you know, what's interesting is when I sing lead or Taylor sings lead or Zach sings lead, the personality of the band changes. Um, and just kind of recognizing that. And then here we were, you know, when you've been doing a, a music as long as we have, 30 years, you know, you gotta find ways to tell new stories and to do things that are different than you've done before. Because you want people to, for lack of a sake, you don't want people to get bored and think that they can expect the same thing. Yeah, um, and so, so, so Red, Green, Blue is kind of a combination of a series of those thoughts for me anyway. Yeah, I think I think 
you, you can see it in all the projects we've been doing. Um, going back a few years, uh, you have uh, string theory, right, which was a project where we used the lyrics of all old and new songs to tell a story and then wrap that around a symphony, right? And it had a, a symphony playing. It was an amazing project to create and to perform live. And Unfortunately, course, we didn't play Against any the original. World yeah. was uh, the next album. We, were, You know, it's an album, but it was released one song at a time. So uh, it was just a very different process of how that was heard as fans. And uh, I think Red, Green, Blue is in that same thought process of saying, um, you know, as a band who's been together for three decades, you want to continually invite people into your story in new ways, into the, the kind of how they hear your projects and, and be able to come at everything almost with new ears, right? When you hear Red, Green, Blue, you learn something new about Isaac and about Taylor and about Zach, right? And when you go back and you listen to our old records, if you go listen to Save Me or you go listen to If Only, right? you're going to hear it with this new knowledge and this new experience, right? And that makes your connection, hopefully, with the band just deeper and fuller. And um, that's the kind of projects, I think, that are most interesting. It's not just about making music. It's about telling stories and about finding new ways to, to bring people into what you are doing and how you're seeing the world. Yeah, it's great. I was watching some of your interviews. I laugh so, so much. <laughs> When you say a fan comes, oh, you're older now. You too, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You know, what a concept. Yeah. Yeah. We do not have, um, you know, the time machine. fountain of youth or a time machine. <laughs> Although uh, the other one but, would be... It's amazing, right? You have such a strong connection with people. And they're still experiencing um, some of those older songs with such sort of... <laughs> so vividly that they, they feel like they want to still see you encapsulated at the moment. I think that's just a testament to the strength of that connection, you know, and I, I don't know who's in control of that. I don't know what we did to create it. I know uh, the way we look at making music is very present and very much about kind of bringing uh, your real life to what you're going through, something that, that hopefully will be timeless, you know, that will, will go beyond the moment you're living, but, but somebody, you know, generations from now will listen to that song and go, oh, they know what I'm going through, yeah. right? And so may maybe that's it. And the name Red, Green and Blue is because it's their favorite colors and also the TV system, right? Yeah, yes. It, it, well, what's funny is it started as our childhood favorite colors. Uh, when we were kids, you're, we're the oldest three of seven kids. And so inevitably people were picking, you know, colors. Oh, that's my toothbrush. Oh, that's my, you know, my luggage. <laughs> you know, I'll mark it with a green sticker or something, you know. Uh, but then what the funny thing is, it's also a color format. And that color format is what is used in tube televisions and LED lights to make all the different colors. And so it's a cool way to say two things at the same time, which is very uniquely different people, which are the unique different colors. But also this is the color format that makes Hanson, yeah, yeah. you know, that makes the unit. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a cool double meaning. That's happening exactly, exactly the same here with my brother. He was green and I was blue. Right, <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And do you guys have a favorite track on the album? Which one of you? Favorite track? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I will say for right now, uh, I think especially because we're on tour, um, I'm really enjoying playing Cold as Ice, which is off the green portion of the record. That one really, that really connects with the audience. It's also just... A jam so we just yeah, it's let, let uh, our bass player let our keys and guitar player really go for it and we all have just an extra amount of fun and it reminds a lot stevie wonder is that why it's your inspiration <laughs> it's definitely it's definitely got some of that yes yeah, the clav, you hear the clavinet yeah yeah definitely yeah. um i mean nobody played it like stevie did like stevie <laughs> does, does and did and yeah um but yeah you're i mean Funk and R and B. I mean, that's those are huge inspirations. It's actually music. interesting because that's the one that's the one song on the record that hints at a lot of the R and B and kind of groove and funk stuff that we have had on a lot of our records over the years. Um, but uh, it's the only one on the record that's like that, um, and I think that's interesting too because I think it says a lot about. Um, I, I think those kind of things happen more when the three of us are in a room together working as a unit. So when you kind of divide and conquer the way we did, 
with this record. You get a little bit more of the songwriter, a little bit more of the melody, and a little bit less of the kind of jam. Yeah, one of the funny things about that song, so um, <laughs> Jim Scott, who produced uh, and engineered with us, uh, had just bought, I forget the exact year, it was a, it was a 60s Model C clavinet, right? Yeah. And he had just gotten it redone and no one had played it yet on a record. Right, it had just he, he had found it and ordered it came in, and uh, I think that that whole song only exists because we wanted to be the first people to record clavinet on that instrument. You know, like yeah. we, we got to be the first one to get well, Jim's, and it Jim's in '64 in the night white in the night clavinet. You know, exactly. and, uh, and it was it literally was, the night before yeah. that it actually finally arrived at the studio. And so, look, we know what we're doing. Maybe we should actually constructed in that line. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, yeah. The song that song actually started off as a ballad, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and I was when I was looking at the title title names tracks, Taylor has one song named We Belong Together, and Zach got another one where I belong. So it's kind of answering <laughs> which tracks when what means this song. Yeah. It yeah. not meanings, yeah. Yeah, it's it's um it's an interesting thing. I think uh, you hear those stories a little bit. Uh, in everything, I think that's probably partly inspired by the the sort of pandemic, where everyone's displaced. If you're a musician or a performer, um, e even a, a band like us, which are so well established, right? We've been a band for thirty years. You know, you wouldn't think you feel brothers. like your fans are gonna go away, but you feel very much like my job, my lifestyle, my life has been taken from me, and it probably. Uh, had an inevitable effect on some of that talking about purpose, talking about place that is in this record. There's there's definitely um, a, a, a thread through all three, red, green, and blue, written independently. We didn't like counsel each other, you should write about where you belong. Yeah. But it happened, um, and I, I love how it's processed in its own way. Each Each brother sort of talks about it well, I mean, actually, Gift of Tears kind of talks about a similar kind of thing as well. It like it's a like you said, a slightly different different approach to it, but a similar kind of feeling of isolation and what do I do with the difficulty of the world around me right mm -hmm. now, and how do I process like what 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 was what was a dream is now a nightmare. I can't do my job or or any version of that, you know, because it because there's a lot of personal things as well as other life things that get into all of those songs. They all kind of become a, a a soup of sorts. And are you guys doing more videos for the new song, another song? Oh, yeah, that's a great well, question. right right now we're we're just busy, busy on tour. So <laughs> um, you know, uh, sharing more content. I mean, this was such a fun uh, project to look at music videos for because just like the the way it was recorded, it was very individual. You know, we kind of said, "Hey, here's what I want to do." Yeah, and that was the moment for someone to say, "Hey, I'm not comfortable," but but everybody was kind of like, "Okay, let's do it," you know. And so Isaac's is so grounded in the story of writing that song for his daughter, and Taylor's is so sort of experimental, and I mean, you know, like it, it, there's an Exploring intensity the, to it, yeah. you know. Uh, and obviously, mine uh, was was so much more about humor than about anything else. Like, what can I get my brothers to do? as a joke you know <laughs> <laughs> he's been wanting to make us do slapstick uh, videos for years yeah so so it, it was a joy and I, I mean that that's more and more it's such a a new frontier for content as musicians um to really lean into the visual side of what we do as as artists right and add more and more and more against the world had all those performance videos with you know different backgrounds and beautiful space so um yeah, I think the future has a lot more music videos in it. Thanks Thank you so much, you guys. Appreciate your time. Great. Have a great show. You too. Thank you. 89. A Rádio Rock.